The heating industry has been left in a right old pickle. Years of upgrading insulation in houses without upgrading our rules of thumb have left boiler and heat pump sizing way off. When boilers were replaced for other boilers, they were replaced for the same size unit, forgetting that the original unit was now old and scaled and down at 50% efficiency, yet still heating the house adequately. They've replaced it with the same size unit, which is huge, and 90% efficient. So now you've got way more heat ever put in that house than ever before and you'd ever need. Then combination boilers came along and that perpetuated the thinking that bigger is better once again. Also not helped by manufacturers producing graphs showing four bed houses requiring 40 kilowatt units, three bed houses, 30 kilowatts, and two bed, 20 kilowatts. Okay, enough of the ranting. The reality is that the average property is around six to eight kilowatts load. Not a lot at all, but also that it really depends on how big the property is and how well insulated it is. To help you as a homeowner or an installer to get an idea of what your heat loss is, we've created a little cheat sheet for you. Now, bear in mind, this is not to be used instead of heat loss calculations, but more of an idea to show you what the breadth of heat loss is and to give you an idea what you should expect to come out of the heat loss calculation. Heat loss calculations being the calculation the engineer should complete to find out exactly how much energy is needed inside your house when it's minus two to minus three outside and you want to keep it, I don't know, 21 inside. If you are getting a heat pump installation complete, it's imperative you get a proper heat loss calculation done. Oversizing the unit will mean that there's more cycling and that it generally runs at a higher temperature and efficiency will tank. Also remember that although engineers may say they've completed a heat loss calculation, the in-depthness of the heat loss calculation can vary hugely. If your surveyor hasn't measured every single wall, every single window, every single doorway, looked at the depth of loft insulation, uh, inquired about cavity insulation, then they have not done a heat loss survey. Oh, and importantly, also measured every single existing radiator in your property, unless you have underfloor. Just the initial details of a heat loss survey alone will take the surveyor one to two hours in your property, not whilst they're speaking to you, that's just measuring, uh, before they can even take the information away to do the heat loss calculation. If they've not spent one to two hours in your property measuring up all of these things, it's highly unlikely they've done anything like an in-depth heat loss calculation. If you get to the installation stage and they still haven't done this, just abort the contract immediately. So with that in mind, here's our cheat sheet. So in reverse order, if you have an older building like Victorian era or before, that's had little upgrades, let's say it's got single glazing, um, minimal loft insulation, uh, solid or cavity wall, you should expect 95 to 110 watts per square meter of floor space in that property. That's the square meterage of every floor, not just the ground floor. If the same property has upgraded some of the glazing and perhaps had uh, more loft insulation installed, maybe some cavity, this would drop to 65 to 85 watts per square meter. And further upgrades upon that will drop it down to 40 to 65 watts per square meter. A pre-2006 new build or recent full renovations will be somewhere like 30 to 50 watts per square meter. And recent new builds, 20 to 40 watts per square meter. Low carbon homes are around 10 to 20 watts per square meter and passive build are below 10 watts per square meter. That's a huge range. One other consideration to have is hot water. You would typically find out how big the heat requirement is for the building. And if it's a very low requirement for the building, you would just have to have a bigger tank if you had hot, a higher hot water storage. Sometimes you may want a slightly bigger heat source because the uh, amount of storage space you have is quite small. So just bear in mind there's a, there's a small caveat in there, but this video is to give you a general kind of guidance anyway. Okay, if you want to grab this cheat sheet from us. It's going to be on an article over on heatgeek.com. I'll link to that in the description below. Just head over there and grab the table, print it off or whatever. If you want to find someone who can do the heat loss calculations for you, look for a heat geek on heatgeek.com slash find a heat geek. Again, I'll link to that below uh, or Google find a heat geek. If you want to learn the longhand way of doing all of this, head over to heatgeek.com where we have a very in-depth article on exactly how to complete this. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one. If you're a consumer and would like more advice on renewable heating, check out our consumer series playlist here on HeatGeek for all you need to know about renewable heating and energy.